What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Another day. I hope your day is going good. It's Trey Coles here as always. Right now, I'm in the RK within Dayton. I got the rotunda behind me, so a good view for a good video. Today's video is going to not be focused heavily on Flutter specifically, but more so code generation that can help speed up your development process. And the code generation tool is called Mason. Essentially what Mason does is it allows you to build these things called bricks, which are reusable templates of code for your application. As you can imagine being a developer, you have to rewrite a lot of code over and over again for different classes and things like that. So with Mason bricks, you can now just generate those templates on the fly, saving a lot of time and a lot of headache. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. All right, so as always, before I do anything with my videos, I love to give credit where credit is due. So be sure to subscribe to Max on Flutter. He has a YouTube channel where he pretty much talks about a bunch of different things related to Flutter. But specifically, I watched his video on how to use Mason CLI, and he goes way more in depth on how to use it. My demonstration is gonna be a little bit more lightweight, but be sure to use him as a resource to get a better understanding of just how powerful the Mason CLI is. So as I mentioned earlier, today's video is going to be focused on Mason and creating bricks. And as I said, essentially a brick is a reusable code template. So instead of having to rewrite boilerplate code over and over again for the models within your app or different directories within your app, services, all of that good stuff, you could rewrite that over and over again, but that can become very time consuming as you can imagine. So with the bricks, we can save some time by essentially just generating those code files on the fly. And so within a lot of my Flutter applications, I use state management, um, specifically GetX. And within GetX, there's always a view and then the view model. So the view is actually just the screen, the presentation, the view model encapsulates the controls that would be needed to operate it on the back end. Within that, I'm always copying and pasting code over and over again. So today's example, I'm going to be creating a brick that will allow me to generate the view model and the view, as well as the directory that that new page belongs to. So for example, when I create a settings page, I'll get a settings directory, and within the settings directory, I'll have a settings view and settings view model file. So this brick is going to actually help me save some time when I need to generate the pages for my Flutter applications. So first things first, let's create a empty directory that we will be storing the bricks in. So I'm just kind of going to call this directory Mason bricks. Then I'm going to run to the command line to do a few installation steps. If I can find it, let's go to desktop. Uh, so first thing we need to do is uh, I'm using homebrew for the installation. So I'm going to run brew tap F E L angel slash Mason. All right, got that. Now we need to actually install Mason. So we're going to run arch dash X 86 underscore 64 brew install Mason. Now I already have Mason installed. So yeah, it's most likely going to just tell me um, I can update it, but that's the command you would need to run in order to get Mason installed to use the command line tools. So with that being said, we have that we have our directory. Now what we need to do is we need to initialize an empty Mason repository essentially within our Mason bricks directory. So I'm going to CD into that directory and then run Mason init. So it created one file Mason.yaml and I'm just going to open up VS code now to check that out. Uh, let's go to our Mason Bricks directory, desktop Mason Bricks. All right. And so right here we have our Mason.yaml, and this is where we will be using a little bit later to configure the path to the bricks that we're using within this app. So the setup is complete as far as the installation. Now we can actually jump into a little bit more code. The Mason Bricks project is empty right now, but now we can go ahead and go ahead and create our first brick. So in order to keep it kind of structured, I'm going to create a directory called bricks within here. And then within that bricks, uh, since I'm using creating a brick for state management, I'll create a state management directory and then we'll place our bricks within that uh, for this demonstration. So I'm going to create a new folder, call it bricks. Then within that folder, call it state management. 
Then I'm going to open up the terminal and we're going to CD into bricks and state management. And now we're going to create the new brick that we just discussed. So we run a command called Mason new and then the name of the brick. So we're just going to call this one get X. So it generated a brick.yaml, readme.md, changelog.md, license, and uh, a brick hello.md file. So all of this right here was created just off that generation. So, and I'll explain a little bit more about what all this is later. Uh, first, we can go into the bricks directory and we can delete this hello.md. This is for demonstration purposes for another brick, but we won't need this for what we're doing. Next thing to look at is the brick.yaml file. This uh, provides some valuable information about the brick itself. But if we scroll down here, we'll see that there's this vars um, setup, and this is the variables that you could use as input when the user is prompted for using the command line. So if we run this command right now, it'll ask the user, what is your name? And continue with that. So for this brick, I want them to ask me, what is the name of the page that we're going to be creating? Because if we create a settings page, we want to then generate those view and view model files accordingly. So I'm going to change this from what is your name to what is the name of the page? And then the description will say name of page and the default will just be example. So if they don't put anything in the input, we'll just create an example directory. Now within the brick directory, I'm going to create another directory called get X. So essentially what I'm doing is everything under this brick directory right here, when we create a new brick, any files that we have within here or any folders or files is going to generate those on the fly for us. So I'm going to create a new folder called get X and then within get X, a new file called view dart and another file view model dart. So since the, the get X folder is under brick, every time we create this brick, we will get the get X directory as well as these two files right here. Then we need to go ahead and register the brick. So what we could do here is we need to remove all this code. We don't need this. And here we're just going to specify the path to that brick that we created. So the bricks that we're using is called the, the brick that we created is called get X. Then we specify the path and that path is going to be bricks management slash get X hit save on that. Now that we got that brick registered, we need to fetch this brick that way, pretty much allowing the computer to know, not the computer, but Mason to know which bricks are actually accessible uh, in order to be used. So we'll run Mason get, and now we got the bricks and it created this dot Mason directory within our package or I mean within our project. And within here is a bricks.json file that simply just specifies the brick that we created as well as the path to that brick. So. If we ever change the directories or move bricks around, make sure that we run Mason Git to fetch the most updated paths and information about that brick. So now with that created, I'm going to go back to the root of the project. And now we're going to go ahead and demonstrate how the creation of this brick works. So we have GitX, the brick made. So we'll run Mason, uh, Mason add GitX. Oops, not add GitX. Um, Mason make GitX. So the prompt says, what is the name of the page? Default is example, but I'm going to call this one's settings. And if we look over within the project, we have a get X directory that was created as well as the view model dart and the view dart. So that's working how it needs to, but it's a little limited in the sense that it's not as dynamic as we need it to be. So this is where we can go in and add some configurations to make it come to life. So for the configuration, if I want the project, I'm going to delete this first, just so for clarification, um, within the bricks, if we want to make the brick creation more dynamic, we would want the name input that was captured by the input to be used for generating our view model, view.dart and our get X directory. So we're going to use a special syntax. I believe it's called mustache syntax, but essentially we're just going to replace the name of get X with two curly brackets opening and closing with name. And so that's going to generate a directory with the name that we specify from the input. We're going to do the same thing with the view model. We're going to uh, prepend that with name underscore view. And I'm gonna copy and paste this to be in front of the view as well. Okay. So now what happens is if we specify the name settings 
from the prompt is going to create that settings directory with a settings underscore view model dot dart file and a settings underscore view dot dart file. So you can see how this is kind of making it a little bit easier instead of having to rewrite the code over and over again, we can use the CLI to make these bricks for us. So now let's try running Mason uh, make get X. So now we're gonna pass in settings. And as you can see, it created a settings directory with the settings view model dot dart and settings view dot dart files. So that's working good, but we can do an even, we can do even more to make it easier because now we want to actually generate the code or the template that we'll be using for this brick. So we got the files now being generated, but let's add some template code to make this actually work. So since we're creating view model and view files, I'm going to open up another one of my projects and copy the code that is used in the view and view models for this class or this project. So um, I'm just using this app I call Book Quotes um, and we'll go to just the dashboard view model. So this is a GetX controller for one of the classes. So I'm just going to copy and paste this code into the view.dart. Okay. Now it's going to be a lot of red squiggly lines because this project doesn't have the dependencies that my book quotes app has. So if you can get past the squiggly lines, then you can make this work. But just know when working with Mason, it's going to be a lot of issues like these, unless you're creating your bricks in the same project that have the dependencies already. Okay. So I'm going to take this stuff out. I don't need that, but I will need these imports for later. Take out this service, take out the book take out this load function, take out this load function. So this is the bare bones of what I want each view model to look like, okay? Now, the next thing that I wanna do is I want to change the name of dashboard to be whatever the name is that the user specified. So in order to do that, I'll come in here and do the same syntax, call it name, but I want it to be Pascal case because I want Instead of just having, if I type in settings, it's all lowercase, I would like the first S to be capitalized. And we can take care of that by just by running Pascal case on the name. And I also want the class names of, I believe this is, whoops, I have this in the view. Let me move this to the view model. And I want the underscore for the name of the view model. That way it's private to this directory only and we'll just call the view when we need it, okay? Also, I'm going to make it a part of directory, so we'll call it part of uh, name. Let's just name underscore view dot dart, essentially saying that this view model belongs to that view. OK, so we got the view model done. Now we come over to the view. I'm going to copy and paste this view in here. Let me find a smaller view because this is a lot of code. Me, uh, that's a lot of code too. dashboard, a lot of code. This looks more feasible. So I want to copy this view over into the view for the brick. And I want this to be part directory. So let's see, part, I'll take the of off and let it know that it is part view model. So it's just referencing these two files together um, just to make it easier whenever I need to call on them. So I don't need this, I don't need that. I need material, uh, pretty much everything that was in the view model yeah, so since this is a part of directory, I don't need to have it in both classes, so I can take it out of here and just put it in here, okay? And I'm going to get rid of a lot of this boilerplate code because the bare bones of the app starting out, it can just be a container whenever we create a new brick. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing. Um, everywhere I see the word books, I'm going to change that to uh, name. Do I want underscore? Yeah, underscore, because the view model was underscored. So we're just gonna change everywhere we see a reference to books, we're gonna call it name underscore, and then view. I believe that's right, no, just name, dot Pascal case. Okay, so let me go ahead and try this. All right, that looks right. So everywhere we have the name Pascal case, view, view, view model, view model, okay. So this should work. I know this looks terrible right now. It just looks like it's a bunch of errors. Look like it's not gonna work, but trust me, it's all gonna come together in a second, all right? 
So we have that, we have the view and the view model complete. Now let's try recreating that brick again with this new code template that we created. So now I'm going to call Mason make get X. Uh, let me delete this settings directory so we can try it again just to see how it looks. And we're going to type in settings. So I ran the command Mason make get X pacified or specified settings for the directory. Now, as you can see, when we come in here, let me close some of these out. If we come into the settings directory within our settings view, we have this underscore uh, settings view, um, the view model, everything pretty much to generate that file how we need to. Now I need to make a few modifications because we don't want the view underscore. So that was my bad. We could take that out here and here, but we only want the underscore when it's used for the view model. So that looks better. So let me try making this brick one more time. And the cool thing is, as you can see, I just make a change here within this template and it automatically updates when I need to make that brick again. So if we call Mason make get X again, specify settings, go to the settings directory within the settings view, we have settings view, how it needs to look. And then we're calling the settings view model within here as well. So if we go to the view model, we have the settings view model, just like that. So that's working how it needs to. Now, the cool thing about Mason is you can make bricks for a specific application, but that would be a little bit limiting. But what you can do in addition to that is make these bricks accessible globally. That way you can use them for other applications. So now I can make these view and view model files within any Flutter application on my device. So in order to do that, we to close this out. I'm going to run a command called Mason add dash G to make it global. Then I'm going to specify the package dash dash path. And then I'm going to specify the path to that brick management dash get X. Uh, why couldn't it find it? Um, state, oh, statement management, not statement, state management. Uh, let me see. Is that right? Brick state management. Oh, I feel like I'm spelling it wrong. All right. Got that right. So now that get X brick was added globally. And we can check and see that by running Mason list dash G. And we have these two global bricks. Now Sprite component was another one I made for generating Sprite components within flame games. But as you can see, we have the get X one now. So let's switch over to the book quotes project again. And within here, I'm going to actually see what this looks like when I need to create a settings page within the app. So I'll go to CD into lib presentation pages. And I have all, I have the books, create book, dashboard, edit book right here. So now I'm going to try Mason, um, make, get X, call it settings. And voila, we have the settings directory. And as you can see, all those green squiggly or the red squiggly lines are gone because the get X and material dependencies are actually within this project. So it only looks kind of awkward for a second, but once you actually create the brick within the application that has the dependencies, everything works smooth. Okay. That's essentially how you use the Mason CLI for your project. Like I said, this isn't specifically to Flutter, so I'm pretty sure that you can use this for any type of project you're working on. So whether it be JavaScript or whatever it is, but I'm already planning to start making a lot of bricks for different apps because for the longest I've been rewriting a lot of boilerplate code. I know when I was using block, writing the state events and block itself over and over again was very time consuming. So. I think Bricks is a very good code generation tool and can be very helpful in saving time for whatever application that you're working on. As always, if this video was helpful, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think about code generation tools such as this or anything where you feel like Mason can possibly improve on. Until next time, have a great day and I will talk to you later. This is Trey Codes signing off.